ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of appropriate age. It's December 29th. It's December 29th, y'all. What in the literal fuck? This year started out amazing. We're going to shoot for the damn stars. I had a book coming out. I have a book that came out. I was doing so much awesome shit. And Karai was going to do so much awesome shit. And the day before the day before New Year. Right? Almost. <laughs> that makes sense. It's the day before, the day before New Year's Eve. Yes. It's two days before New Year's Eve. That, yeah, that tracks. Um, hi, Karai. What an intro. Hi, Sam. Hi, Sam. I, I love your intro, actually. Uh, seriously. <laughs> Whoever did that job is, is looking amazing. The Whiskey Sum logo. Oh, yeah. Building up like that. That's too good. It's actually the guy who does your graphics for Paul John. Oh, nice. <laughs> I was looking on Upwork to find someone to do the animation, and I saw the portfolio, and I'm like, did you just do the Paul John, like, elephant for, like, an experience? He's like, no, I do the motion graphics for Paul John, and I'm like, well, shit, you're hired! <laughs> um, Let's talk about that. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the final episode of Spirited in 2020. This year has been a whirlwind. Um, we started out with our friends at the Hospitality Life doing a Whiskey Wednesday live stream every Wednesday. And that was a whole bunch of fun and we enjoyed it and we had a lot of great content. And you can see that on their Twitch channel, actually. Twitch.tv forward slash Hospitality Life. And then we switched over to doing our own live stream, calling it Spirited. Um, and we have, you know, pre-recorded episodes too. And those are going to be coming out more in 2021. The last, you know, month and a half I've been focusing on getting all sorts of great live content out because I've had the daily video from the whiskey, from the beginner's guide to whiskey. Um, so I'm really excited to close out the year with... A gentleman whom I have had the great pleasure of working with and working alongside as a fellow, you know, member of the whiskey community and as a fellow member of whiskey media and in his role now as the Western Regional Director for Paul John Indian Single Malt, Mr. Karai Khan Ozdemir, a.k.a. Whiskey Monster. Thank you, Sam. It's great being here. It's great to see you. And as we were, I was mentioning you on email, like this is one of the last things I'm doing this year. So it's really nice to close it with you. Always nice to close out the year with friends. Um, so quick hello to our friends in the chat, Jane Albache and Swami from Malton in Montreal, who I just last night decided I don't after all hate anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what are we drinking? Oh, uh, I actually started before connecting so oh. i'm starting with our well, christmas edition i guess i'll start with christmas then too yeah yeah please let's go there we go you you have a miniature i have a little bit bigger one here you have a little bit bigger of one and i actually still have a little bit of the mini from last time oh um, really? so i'm gonna save that and give it away to uh a couple lucky people who may Lovely. never have had the opportunity to try ah, you, you, uh, Please go ahead and try 2020. I will, I will send the minis out. Don't worry about it. I won't be keeping you from that. Okay, perfect. So talk to us a little about Paul John 2020 Christmas <sighs> edition. Talk to us about the Christmas edition releases in general. Sure. Uh, it's, it's a little bit off point. Like this, this is kind of limited edition for Paul John that we've been doing since 2018. So this is the third annual uh, Christmas edition that we are doing. And every year we have a different bottle. So the first year was a bourbon matured whiskey, bourbon barrel matured whiskey with uh, Oloroso finish. Then in 2019, we had a Pedro Jimenez finish on bourbon maturation. That was so good. Yeah. And after these two, we were expecting it at a finish this year, honestly. Uh, then Michael, our master distiller, Michael D'Souza, surprised us with the 2020 because he didn't do finishing. Instead, he did a blending with three different cast styles. And 2020 is like a 
blend of single malts uh, from three different cast styles being ex bourbon oloroso and for the first time ever american virgin oak and american virgin oak is a new style that we are introducing to paul john line especially in next months we'll have an exciting whiskey coming and i think that we actually um understood on the way and we can just inform you that christmas editions are like experimental bottles 2018 we did with oloroso finished and it gave us the new oloroso which is just next to me and then 2019 was a px finish and then we have the px just next to it sorry there's a lot of sound so okay yeah this way so this is our px these are quite the new bottles so we actually introduced uh christmas edition oloroso and px at the same time in uh, the us oh yes so 2020 will also be an introduction to another new paul john bottle coming in uh hopefully spring which will be called me too now which already won a few awards uh by the whiskey community and it's going to be aged in um american virgin oak first then it's it will be finished in ex bourbon barrel so it's it's a wow. really exciting whiskey and that's why the american virgin oak edition the blending is really important for us with this whiskey and that's and actually we are just doing a sneak peek right now with you <laughs> so what you're yeah. selling what you're telling us is that we should look to christmas edition every year to figure out the new product that's coming out for paul john there's not a written rule but it goes like that for now <laughs> <laughs> like it's not the policy that we are taking this is uh, this is like a tire fire <laughs> So every Paul John Christmas edition is uh, mildly peated. So we have a hint of peat in it. That's what we'd like to call. Um, this two is more than a hint, all right. This is like... Yeah, yeah. So the reason... Uh, do you have 19 over there? Um, do I have 19? I do not have 19. Okay. So in any case, like uh, when you when we finish the whiskeys with Oloroso and PX barrels, actually, that sweet wine profile from the barrel... Uh, took some of the peat with it and when we introduced some american virgin oak i think with the freshness of virgin oak and with the dominancy of the spiciness not the sweetness uh we introduced a little bit more peat into the game and especially in the finish with 2020 you, you feel a lot of peat but it's still mildly finished i might repeat it sorry swami says that the paul john peter is one of his favorites when he drank whiskey oh I agree with that. It's still one of my favorites. The contrast between the nose being, you know, burnt chicken and a tire fire and burnt rubber to the beautiful, delicate, sweet fruit and you know, the hint of peat on the palate is fantastic. I, th I think this is a whiskey that actually Michael showed his skills of blending. Because Michael used to be a blender before he started as a master distiller at Paul John Distillery. And he was blending those, you know, best-selling whiskeys of the world, which are actually miracles of blending to be cons to create the consistency because you are selling like 100 millions of uh, bottles. So that's pretty hard. So Michael used to do that. And for the first time ever in Paul John, he brought three different cast styles together. And we are actually seeing this right now. It's really good. You know, I really respect how hard it is to marry not only three different cask styles but assuming that each of those casks those single malts not all of them are going to be peated so you've got to blend that peat in there so it's not overwhelming and overpowering there are there are different things like even before coming to peat uh, i can tell you about because we also do sing, uh, single cask programs and this year we were doing one with southern california whiskey club and what happened was we had five different whiskey uh, samples from like exactly at almost same uh, ABV level, like 59 to 60. Same age, same barrel type, same warehouse, and they, they tasted totally different. Oh, absolutely. Blending, blending those together is, is a nightmare. And it's a skill, of course. Exactly. You know, people like uh, Michael D'Souza, um, like, Sandy Heislap, who's the master blender for Shiv, is who I'm trying to get on the oh, show. Yeah, yeah it's especially amazing. with someone like something like Shivas, 
or even, you know, Jim Beveridge for Johnny Walker to blend that in such a perfect ratio that it comes out the same every time is really difficult. It takes a huge, um, it takes a lot of skill. So we talked about the whiskey a little bit, but let's talk about you a little bit. Because like myself, if I may, you've had a really interesting career in whiskey. You didn't start out like a lot of other people did. Yeah, uh, my story is a little bit peculiar. I started my, I actually, well, I'm a Turkish. I lived in Turkey for like over 30 years, I guess. And I used to be an engineer. I was educated to be a civil engineer. I have a master's degree in ocean engineering. So I was actually uh, designing marinas and like, you know, ports, tsunami warning systems. I was pretty technical about it. I actually worked as an engineer for seven years or so. But during that uh, period, I actually lived in uh, Denmark for a year. And I used to love alcoholic beverages because I used to be a musician on the stage. So I was quite interested in that. And I, when I was living in Denmark, I tasted single malt whiskeys. And I was like, OK, I need to understand this more. Uh, also, a lot of good beers uh, from Belgium and Denmark. Mm -hmm. So I started. I started educating myself. I s actually started my first blog, and in, in Turkish, and started writing on it. Then it was like a poison, you know. Like I, I, it, it got into me more and more, and I wanted to learn. I got more education, and I started organizing events. And then, then I started giving education after getting like after being confident that I can tell about whiskey a little bit. So it took off pretty fast. And at that time, you know. Uh, Twitter was there. I think there was no Instagram back then. So we were just no, you know, it wasn't. Yeah. releasing everything from Twitter. We were writing, I was writing my blog on Tumblr. I, guess, I don't know if you know it. Uh, so I'm it not took that young, fast. thank you. <laughs> yeah. It took off pretty, pretty fast. And then I started working with brands in Turkey, uh, whiskey brands. Like I was organizing events with them. I was collaborating with them, but I was still an engineer. And in 2016, I was like, okay. I want to make my life from whiskey. And then I quit my job. I started working independently in Turkey, helped a couple brands, and I moved to the States after getting a green card, uh, luckily. And I moved to San Francisco directly. Then I started working as a spirits buyer for a retail account in San Francisco. That was that was a pretty interesting uh, experience for me because you know it's a different venue, it's a different style, it's a different country, and people uh, people's drinking culture is totally different. Then after do, uh, doing that for two, almost two years, I needed to pass to brand side because I love telling people about whiskey. I love to educate them. And after a couple of interviews, I also met Mr. Paul John and we agreed that I can do this job in California. Then it happened to be the West Coast. And I just started as a West Coast, West Coast regional manager for Paul John Whiskey. Uh, we are two in the country, east and west. And I'm managing the west part with my counterpart, Devin, looking for the east. And it's, it's going pretty good. It's, an, it's a really interesting job. And, you know, we, are, we were always traveling. And this year, it all changed. Like 2020 changed our job description, totally. And Absolutely. Yeah, so meanwhile, I'm, I'm still keeping on writing whiskey, on whiskeymonster.com. Uh, Shane says she hopes you still do music. Uh, at home, I'm trying to do is, is like music is a different beast. Uh, you need people, you need medium, you need to know pe you need to know people. Uh, the first thing, and I don't think that my period in the last two years I had time for that. And in 2020, as you can see, uh, it, it has been very bad for musicians, I guess, uh, because music needs being social, getting social in front of the camera is just one part of the work, I guess. Same for us. So we have been doing everything in front of the camera, like you and me. Yeah, and uh, it's it's been it's been doing good because we can actually do tastings with you know people in Turkey like, like I'm doing or in Europe in Japan uh, or nationwide. Uh, but at the same time, we we feed ourselves from so getting socialized. We feed ourselves from yeah. red drams and toasting it with people. So I hope that that will come back pretty soon. <laughs> I expect it to come back around mid 2021. Hopefully, yeah, let's cross our fingers for that. 
Knock on wood. I, I got a lot here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, you're being very modest, Karai. Whiskey day. Monster was just named one of the top 20 whiskey blogs, and you're featured Thanks. in a brand new whiskey book, are you not? Oh, yes. Uh, I've been doing this a lot. And like the only reason I started sharing about whiskey on my websites is sharing my knowledge, sharing what I know about it. And maybe people don't know. And the reason I started drinking good things is also about, you know, people should drink good things. We are not living too far. Uh, and it is, it's a limited lifespan that we can actually enjoy the indulgences of life. And that's why what I start, why I started my thing on Whiskey Monster. And thanks to all my followers, it just to it, it they were they're just treating me good. So I, I'm trying to get them the most honest way um, that I can deliver news about whiskey. So I do honest reviews uh, for everything. I try to deliver them the news of Whiskey World as much as possible. And I think they liked it. So I was named and one of the top 20 blogs uh, in the whiskey world. And especially in last month, uh, I've, been, I've, been, I've been on the very top, so that, that's what, pretty good news. And thanks to Ingvar Ronde, who is the author of uh, Malt Whiskey Yearbook 2020, he included me in his list, I'm thankful to him. And I, you know, I'm just trying to share my knowledge, share the news, share the passion. And I want a lot of people to be educated and introduced to the good culture of whiskey and drinks like it's just not whiskey i i do love a lot of things i do like champagne i like beer so whatever i can enjoy i want people to know about them and i actually don't uh let's say i i love to deliver whatever i know if, for whichever brand i know if there's a good whiskey i'll of course name that i'm, I'm not like you know uh that fanatic of a brand or stuff so the whiskey has to be good if i want to let people know about it. Uh, likewise, like like you do, like you you're exactly. writing a book. It's it's not just for yourself. It's for the public, for people to exactly. understand what you're thinking you about. Know, it's the same thing. You said something right now that's really really powerful and important. Is you have to like the whiskey. Mm -hmm. I will write about it, no matter what. If I like it, I will say that. If I don't like it, I'll say that too. I don't yeah. want to run a blog where I'm only putting up positive content because then it feels sponsored and paid for to me. Mm -hmm. I'm doing this because this is what I love. You know, like you, I love whiskey. That's why I got into this. Um, it, I mean, you can see on my desk over here, like all those sample bottles, not just the Paul John ones. They're samples I have to review. There's a bunch of bottles down here at my at my feet on my desk. Um, I do this. I work in whiskey because I love it. Because whiskey means something to me. It's more than just the liquid in the glass, though, too. Of course. It's the community. It's the people like yourself who I've had the pleasure and sometimes the honor of meeting and working with. So to that, I say cheers. Please. Cheers. Slender. And let's move on to the next gram. Please. So, it's up to you. Uh, do you want to continue with bourbon? So, like, I can, let's talk a little bit about everything. And yeah. let, I will let you to taste that. So, let's go in order. So, the first whiskey I, I will introduce you is uh, Nirvana, our, one of our new whiskeys, actually. Uh, I don't see. We don't have Nirvana. Nirvana? I didn't say Nirvana. Well, I have some. Give me one second. I'll be right okay. back. Yeah, no, no worries. <laughs> I can rush it here. Okay, Sam is gone. It's all it's all me now, guys. Please ask me questions. <laughs> no, I did. So Paul John Peters, Malta de Montreal. Uh, I do like it a lot, especially with some um, highball. Well, I have a wonderful story about it that I will tell to Sam when he comes back. Uh, it's amazing. Okay, Nirwana, ready? Perfect, you have it. You have a whole bottle of this one. So Nirwana is, I don't hear you. Yeah, it's like this it. much, Katie gave it to me. You, you're doing good. <laughs> <laughs> so Nirwana, well, is a different whiskey. We, we brought it uh, three days before COVID lockdown in March. That was really interesting. And this is our entry level whiskey. 
and we so introduced Nirvana uh, is a new entry level as opposed to classic now. Yes, uh, brilliant. Uh, opposed to uh, brilliance, not classic. So, okay, so it's now Nirvana, then brilliance. Yeah, then brilliance, then edited bold. So gotcha. Nirvana is the new uh, entry level whiskey, and the reason we created this was interesting because we actually made this for uh, the French market. So French people, you know, France being one of the highest single malt consumer countries of the world, especially the highest, I guess, right now. And what they did wanted was they wanted something light, young, 40% ABV and under 30 euros. And we created them the Nirvana and it sold out pretty quick. And then we decided, why don't we bring to the US and the other countries? Then we brought it here and it, actually it did really good. We sold out what we brought. Uh, to the United States. That's fantastic. Uh, that, that's fantastic. And it's 40% ABV, three-year-old whiskey. It, it tastes like more because of the, you know, uh, tropical climate in Goa that we can talk about. Please and, go into that. Actually, I would love for yeah. you to discuss that. So Goa, where, where our distillery is on the southwest coast of India, having a tropical climate. With tropical climate, I'm talking about 1995 degrees in average and 70 75% humidity. And when those things come together, you actually lose a lot of whiskey from your barrel through the year. So in one year, we lose around 8 to 10% of whiskey. In Scotland, this is like 1% to 3%. In Kentucky, it's varying between like 4 to 10% from place to place and warehouse to warehouse. And in Taiwan, this is like 12 to 14%. Uh, so it, it can get more. But 8 to 10% is really a big uh, number for us. And after five years, we actually have a really good spirit in our hands. Uh, there are, you know, there, there are comments like one year in India is like three, four years in Scotland about the oak extraction. Yes, that's the case. And in five years, we can do a really good whiskey. In three years, we can do a really good light whiskey. And when we are, when we were deciding to do Nirvana, we actually decided to use a different barrel construction with that. So normally in our core range, all of our whiskeys are first and second fill barrels. With Nirvana, we used second and third fill barrels because we wanted to have a lighter uh, quality from the barrel, but a heavier quality from the spirit itself because our spirit is different uh, coming from the barley itself. We use a, a six row barley harvested from India uh, it's not like any other distilleries that are using barley from uh, Europe, Scotland, Slovenia, or Germany. We wanted to have everything native to India. And that's why we are using barley from India. It's a different species. It has more proteins, less carbohydrates, which ends up with a heavy, chewy uh, mouthfeel. So that mouthfeel is actually the key to Nirvana because when you drink it, it doesn't give you the feeling of a three-year-old scotch. It gives you a total, well-matured, 10 to 12 year old scotch feeling, uh, just to compare the mouthfeel. And also the, the six row barley creates a lot of esters, uh, which ends up with a lot of fruity flavors like tropical fruits, stone fruits, mangoes, papayas. And that's why Nirvana is, for the price range, it can be deceiving and it's actually a pretty good whiskey. And the numbers are not uh, mistaking us too. Like now, right, right now we are expecting MSRP, second. MSRP for uh, twenty nine ninety nine. Thirty dollar whiskey, single that's, malt whiskey. That's thirty dollars. Yeah. Thirty dollars. Yeah, just thirty dollars. And actually, it can be less if you know where you're buying from. <laughs> <laughs> that's a fantastic whiskey for thirty dollars. Yeah. So it's that's great introduction uh, to Indian single malt. Um, I believe so. we believe so, and that's I mean the I only th believe so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's why we brought, and you know, uh, that's why we are out of stock right now. Hopefully, they are here. Wow, as really? As speak. Yep. Uh, as we speak, they are here. <laughs> I believe that because I just get the news in the morning. And the other thing is because we want to be uh, really transparent with our uh, products. All of our whiskeys are non-colored and non-chill filtered. The only thing with uh, Nirvana, it's chill filtered because it's at 40% ABV. So why is it at 40%? So until 46%, you don't need to do chill filtration. 
uh, because of the clarity. Uh, 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 below 46%, if you don't do chill filtration, uh, you will lose the clarity of the spirit. That's one of the things. Fair uh, we, yeah, we didn't want to lose that. Since it's at 40%, we had to do it. And that's the only chill filtered whiskeys in our range. And I don't, I don't see any other things will be done too. But the color is natural. And it's, if, if you look at the color, it's, uh, second and third fill bar barrels show their impact with a lightly sappy color. Jane, uh, that's a lizard. fantastic question. Yes. What is chill filtration? Do you want to go for that or should I go for it? I'll take it. Um, mm -hmm. The short answer is in a whiskey, there are fatty esters, I guess is the easiest way to describe it. Mm -hmm. And if you bring the whiskey down to near freezing, you're basically passing it through a sieve. So it's going to catch all those fatty uh, lipids, not esters, fatty lipids. So you're chilling it to filter out those fatty lipids that in a lower proof whiskey may not, may or may not be soluble. Or a popular, popular, pop, yeah, it's, it's the right technical uh, explanation. Uh, but let's, let's go to the layman's terms. When you put a whiskey <laughs> in the fridge, when you, when you put the whiskey in the fridge, a bottle of whiskey in the fridge, if it's non chill filtered, when you take it out of the fridge, you will see some particles and haziness and cloudiness in the spirit. If it's chill filtered, you won't have that. So uh, there are some aspects to it. When companies do chill filtration, they actually you want to look to be clear uh, all the times. Little temperature changes may might make uh, make the bottle look a little bit hazy. So sometimes you don't want this. Another reason is to clear all the heavy particles coming from the fatty esters and having a light, easy sippable uh, whiskey or spirit. Like this actually all started with vodka. And that's another thing to put it on the name. So there, there are different aspects to it, but that's the really bold, like the statement, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Does that answer your question, Jane? We'll wait for her. There's a couple seconds. Yeah. <laughs> so from um, this one, we so are one actually- We haven't yeah, talked about yet. About no, no, my, my apologies. I was just gonna say, you know, we've talked about, you know, the new release coming out that I can't remember the name of. We've talked Me about all the Mituna, thank you. We've mm -hmm. talked about Oloroso and PX. We talked about Christmas. There's one you haven't talk, talked about yet, though. Which one? The new. I, I have five. Oh, XO. Actually, I should, I you have, have five yeah. new SKUs. Yeah, we have five new SKUs, and bad news, I forgot my XO in the car. <laughs> I mean, I don't have it here either, so you're okay. Let Let me check the website if I can show you that. Can I share screens? You should be able to. Let me check the screen. So let me get on the first um, the core range, and that then we can definitely understand it better. If you don't Absolutely. Mind. So all of the whiskeys I told you about are actually the whiskeys that we didn't start with. So we started our uh, journey with different whiskeys. We have five whiskeys in the core range, and they are just between everything we told. So we first have the Brilliance, our unpeated whiskey, unpeated whiskey at 46% ABV. So this is like one step higher from Nirvana. It's unpeated 46% aged in first and second field bourbon barrels. Then we pass on to Edited. And Edited is like mildly peated. So it's with a hint of peat, as we like to say. And that's like a little bit of smoky with barbecue smoke with tropical fruits, a little bit of coffee and mocha. And then we have the Bolt, which is heavily peated whiskey with Isla peat. So this is like giving you medicinal smell, the, the briny feeling coming from, you know, uh, the salty waters and everything else. Did I, I, I think I lost some. <laughs> no, I'm here. I, I'm just kidding. Um, then we have, another, so these are at 46% ABV. Then we have cast strength, Paul Jones. The first one being a classic, unpeated. Uh, this one is one of my favorites with cigars. It's I'm like 55.2%. Yeah, I, I love this one. And then we end the core range with Malted and Montreal's favorite, peated. So this is like 111 proof, heavily peated with Highland peat mostly. 
And this is like giving you all those wonderful uh, spicy feeling with uh, white chocolate and peat, of course. So you have all those smoking. So these are the whiskeys we started with. And then we came up with the Christmas editions as a limited editions. And then we created Nirvana. And then we created these two guys over here, which are the Oloroso and PX gas. The stories for these are these are aged for five years in bourbon barrels, then two more years in Oloroso and PX barrels, respectively. And look at the color difference. This is a clear gloss. Wow. Let me show it this way. So if we're talking about classic. They are the same age, by the way. Oh, your layout again. Oh, wrong one. There we go. So they are almost the same age, and this is color difference. And that color difference is coming from the bourbon. Like this is a bourbon barrel aged whiskey. This is a bourbon barrel aged plus Oloroso barrel finished whiskey. And that Oloroso barrel impacts the whiskey a lot. The color. That's of course the taste, but you know, color is the first thing you see on a whiskey. And just be careful because color has to be natural. We are talking about color, and Paul John has it all natural. No color added. I like that. Yeah. All natural color. Then, then let me show you our beautiful EXO. So EXO is different because EXO is a new spirit from Paul John. Let's see if I can share my tab. Let's go. Can you see it? There we go. OK. So EXO is our new brandy. And we want to do everything uh, as much as Indian as we can uh, with our whiskey. And with our brandy, we wanted to do the same thing. So what we wanted to do is we brought, we wanted all the grapes to be Indian. But, you know, there are some problems because generally when we do, um, when you do brandy, it has to be uni blanc. And then if we don't have uni blanc like naturally in uh, India. That's why we had to bring something else. So what we did was we imported Uni Blanc <coughs> 10, 11 years ago, brought it to India, and we sold it on the soil, and we started to grow Uni Blanc grapes. And we got a good you know, result. And then we combined it with two native gra grapes, Bangalore Blue and Bangalore Purple, blend it all together, aged the spirit in uh, French limousine oak for 8 to 10 years, and then we have the new Paul John XO. It will yeah, be also released in sp uh, spring, hopefully. It's in the States. We are just waiting for, you know, the last confirmations and everything, all the pricings. Uh, so, it's Paul pretty John limited, by the way. Please, sorry, go ahead. Uh, it's, it's just going to be 927 bottles minus two that I already drank, so 925. <laughs> <laughs> Karai, you get just over kidding. this. If you're gonna uh, you drink, if you're gonna bottle, some of the you bottle you have it. Some of the bottle you have over there. So. I do. If not, you will have because I already bottled everything. <laughs> <laughs> so well, let's put it in this way. You did. Yeah, I sent it. I, I bottled everything. Yeah. I thought these were from the company themselves. I was like, this is really nice. It's really clever little packaging. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. You also tell me how you did this because I like this. <laughs> Thank you. Um, it, it wasn't easy, you know. Our branding <laughs> team, of course, know. of course, the branding team helped with the labels and everything. Um, so we talked about the Matuna, we talked about EXO, we talked about <laughs> Bay Area, Bay Area, PX and Oloroso. What's number five? Uh, we talked about PX, Oloroso, EXO. Actually, I didn't show you Mithuna yet. No, you haven't. Let me show you the Mituna. So Mituna will be our new limited edition. So it actually started as um, actually started as uh, a different whiskey because you know we never did an American original uh, aged whiskey, and that uh, led us to make one. So I will show you what it is, but. It's the second bottle in our Zodiac series. And Zodiac series is pretty interesting because Michael, our master distiller, is really interested in space and astrology. So the first bottle was called Kanya, Mar which is sold oh, out no, right Kanya. now. I it was no, that's Kanya. 
No, that's different. So can <laughs> Zodiac uh, series is named under Zodiac signs. So we will have 12 of them when it comes to an end. So if you if you don't have Kanya, find one, stock it somewhere. Uh, I, th I think we only have one left in Northern California and maybe two. And there, there are some in Michigan, I can tell you that. And <laughs> Kanya was the counterpart of Virgo in Indian Zodiac sign. So if there's any Virgo, Kanya is a bottle for you. It was a seven-year-old expert uh, matured whiskey at 50% ABV. It, it's the smoothest Indian whiskey you can ever find in the market. And I tasted all of them, so I can tell you. Then the second barrel was a little bit, uh, you know, later than we expected, but we just announced, we were just getting ready to announce it, then it was selected as the third finest whiskey. And so, and even we didn't have the bottles out there, but now we have the bottles. Now I can show you what it looks like. Let's see the application window. Here we go. Yeah, this is our new Mithuna. Ooh, and that is yeah, this gorgeous gorgeous bottle so mituna is the counter uh, indian counterpart of gemini and for we are not gonna wait exactly for gemini season uh but we will be with gemini sign but we will be releasing it uh hopefully soon in march february march so uh, when, what when we are ready. Be coming in at so this one is should be at 57 58.7 yeah, 58. 58%. Ooh, yeah, 58%. Fun. Unpeated, as you can see, my shoot in American Virgin Oak. Oak. And unpeated yeah. and finished at X Bourbon. Yep. You're expecting a wonderful whiskey. And this is the tasting notes that so, Michael has. Really quick. Yep. If you scroll back up for us, Karai. Here we go. Um, not that far up. That part. I need to see the uh, text. Yeah, right there. Oh, yeah. It's the third, it's the counterpart, the third Zodiac sign. I thought this was the second release. Why are you? No, no, this is Zodiac. This sign? is a, no, 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 no. This is our second release, but uh, Gemini is the third Zodiac sign on the Zodiac calendar. Okay. <laughs> Let me give you a little bit of uh, detail. So it's not about us, it's about the Zodiac sign. Um, so in Indian Indian zodiac signs, you start with one. I don't remember it right now, but then you come with uh, at the end. The third one is Gemini. That's why we call it. The third gotcha. One. But thank you for the feedback. That can be misunderstood. I will inform the team about it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for that. What uh, yeah, uh, like this is going to be really uh, interesting, and this. Is, it will be really fun. Uh, this is another limited edition, though, so we will be having it in March. We already have a big interest in it, and I think how many bottles? I think we will have three hundred fifty cases, which ends up at one eleven hundred bottles in the U.S. Interesting. Now, you know, of course, I'm also a consumer of whiskey media, mm -hmm. so I was listening to, um. One Nation Under Whiskey earlier, actually. And something you just said brought something that they talked about back to mind of, is there too much whiskey being released? You know, yes. you have <laughs> it's easy. three new limited editions coming out. Uh, we, like, the plans wasn't like this. So 2020 changed some things because we actually, we had a really stable plan of Nirvana being released in March, uh, in February. Then PX and Oloroso being released in uh, May and June, uh, back to back. Then we would have the Christmas edition. So it was, you know, in a linear scale, it was going to be like that. Then 22, that like COVID happened and we were Sorry, just surprised. Sorry, I'm turning off the lights. No worries, no worries. <laughs> I do it all the time. So when COVID happened, you know, distributors were like, okay, we, we cannot we cannot get anything new right now because nobody know what was going to happen uh, yeah and that's that's when we decided okay let's take some time to release our whiskeys because like px and all rosa were our were at the warehouses for a while but we didn't push them in the market uh, yeah. because we wanted to understand what's going on and of course we didn't want to 
our partners to be on the bad side of the business because you know they can they, they didn't want to spend money some states didn't buy anything at all supermarkets this year they even didn't look at the new products of any brands this year and the supermarkets wow. are meaning like um trader joe's in california costco and uh, they they stopped their meetings they canceled their meetings until 2021 so that's why we took our time it sounds like we are rushing in winter but at the same time you know we have a px oloroso and christmas edition like christmas edition of course we have to release at this season but px and oloroso <laughs> are quite like a little bit winter whiskies when you taste them you will see sure. that the oloroso and px impact so we, uh we want we thought let's that go to those back. yeah please like Oh no! No, no, it it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, for those of you watching, we are obviously at a different location than usual today, um, because of you know the nature of the world right now. Um, things have been a little hectic Weird. in my um, circle, and there's been a potential exposure for COVID. So I am home. And not at my usual shooting location of my office slash my studio just to play it safe for a few days. I'm okay. I haven't had the exposure, but someone close to me has potentially. So we're playing it safe for a few days. Just be safe. It doesn't matter. We always had virtual backgrounds, if not. They don't work very well in my bedroom. <laughs> okay. I, I actually didn't try them on uh, StreamYard, which I use very well. I've never tried it. Let's give it a try. Why not? Um, setting green screen. Let's try it. Yeah, so it doesn't doesn't work very well. Yeah, it says it. It will use RAM. <laughs> I don't care. Oh yeah. Nope, it doesn't. Not this one. Yeah, it doesn't work particularly well. So like uh so that's the uh, so, PX. Yeah. And so in 2021, we will see uh, XO, Mituna, and of course the Christmas edition 2021. That's on our plan right now. Do you have an idea what's coming out for Christmas 21? I don't have any idea. Michael generally keeps it as a secret until he announces it. <laughs> of course. Uh, he like, of course, we have some, you know, guesses, wild guesses. And if it, if it will influence Michael, if he watches here, I would love to say, like, Michael, I would love to have a second fill peated, second fill bourbon barrel peated, finished in port casks. Oh, yes, Michael, please. Yes. <laughs> um, I will email Paul John. I will email Michael. I will email Himanshu. <laughs> so, like, we, we, we know that he's been uh, experimenting on Portuguese wine barrels for a while. So that's that's a that's a chance. He's been experimenting with rum barrels. That's a chance. Uh, he can just do something with a bourbon barrel. You never know. Oh wow! This Oloroso is fantastic. So Oloroso and PX, yeah, they they are interesting. And the good story behind them is like the barrels itself. If you if you uh, gave a little bit detail in my talking, I did I never mentioned sherry. You're right. You didn't. So our Oloroso and PX barrels are not from Harris. So that's why we don't call them Sherry. Interesting. Where are they from? So they're from Andalusia. And the reason we source them from oh, Andalusia, Andalusia is... Spain. Okay. Yeah. The reason we are getting them from there is the rising demand for Sherry barrels. Because, you know, in Harris, it's really hard to find um, the barrels that you want right now. And Michael wanted something yeah. to live in. Older. Especially because he, there's also a rise in sherry consumption. Oh, so, yeah. That, that's a, I love that, by the way. <laughs> oh, dude. I love sherry. I've got some in the yeah. fridge right now. No, oh, wonderful. It's, I love it. And I actually, gotta, I should get some for uh, New Year's night. That's a great idea. Ooh. Yeah. Sherry highballs. Why not? I'm not the other highballs. Amazing. Two ounce sherry, top with club soda. Topo Chico, yeah. of course, be the, the best. Uh, Topo Chico, I have I a new favorite too. Uh, Top Note. That's a good Top one. Top Note. Yeah. Is that one of Gavin's brands? <laughs> I have no idea. Probably um, not. For those watching, <laughs> a friend of mine in Karai's, uh, he works in like market wholesale and just all of a sudden 
like I'll see Karai drinking like a new beverage and it's usually from Gavin. Hop tea is a good one. Come on, hop tea is Gavin just gave me once and like I've been fan favorite for hop tea because at the same time, you know, it came to my exercising and diet time and it's zero calories. It smells like beer, tastes like tea. What 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 do I want more? Yeah, I'm Turkish, I love tea. 80 pounds. Uh, yeah, I lost 82 pounds in six months. That's amazing. It feels good. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> that is roughly 13.6666666667 pounds per month. Kind of. Yeah, like, you know, uh, this job is demanding on the field. Yeah. When you travel, when you drink, when you eat. And I wasn't at a healthy point. Uh, before COVID hit, so I actually before COVID, I decided to exercise more. Then COVID happened, and I was like locked down in the house. What better thing to do than exercising? Since I also like drinking with friends, and I had no yeah. friends around uh, in my house, so like, and that that was the best decision. So I started working out every day. Yeah. So it no, started like, you know, no, it started like, like you know, I've lost almost thirty pounds by now. Awesome. My idea was like do exercise per one week then two weeks and one month then i couldn't stop and it's been like how many days right now i don't know maybe 280 290 days i guess and i've been still exercising every day which is not that you know smart but you know i like i like to do it <laughs> and yeah then i we cooked everything home i drank less of course and it happened to be 82 pounds i'm at the level that i want to maintain right now so i'm I changed my training circle, so I'm doing something else. It's a different time, different exposures. Uh, it feels nice, honestly. I can tell you that. That's important. Yeah. Um, you know, like you said, this industry, especially your role as a brand representative, my role as, you know, a buyer and, you know, a bartender, I'm often out drinking and eating myself all the time um sometimes it's with yourself when you're in town or if i'm up in the bay area we can still um, do that <laughs> pardon we will still do that don't worry about it. but my point is you know it's yeah. an unhealthy lifestyle that we live sometimes because it's oh well, hey let's have a shot let's have a shot oh i'm hungry let's order french fries or something cheap and quick and then go to the next place and you know that's something I myself am working on as well. So, back to the whiskey because we're getting we keep yeah, getting okay. distracted. But so we um, were at the sherry. We were talking with a friend. You know, we need to catch up properly sometime soon. Of course, yeah. uh, I was at the PX level. So our sherry barrels are from Andalusia. The reason we got them is we couldn't find the old barrels that we wanted. So in Andalusia, we are working with a bodega, which actually uh, sourced us beautiful, which we call historic uh, casks, and they are sixty years old. Six zero, uh, Olorosa and PX gas, which, which gives us every aspect of every depth of the sweet wine we want, and that's why you are having that wonderful depth of flavors like nuttiness and raisins, plums, and prunes with the Oloroso. And they are, it's aged for two years in those barrels, and it's not you know in two years you get every aspect in a balanced way, and it's not overshared, it's not you know uh, overpowering the bourbon barrel uh, characteristics. Same for the PX. So what is the technical term? If it's not sherry, it's just PX, Spanish Sweet wine? wine? PX and Oloroso, yeah. I never thought about it. You know, it's interesting because California is allowed to sell California sherry. Uh, yeah, there, there are, you know, yeah. there, there have been issues about California import uh six seven years ago if i'm not wrong i don't remember the company but they called it port so there was like a lot of conversation going on about it so they had to change the name uh, now they can use it again i guess but yeah yeah in the in the us it's possible but you know we're talking about different parts of spain and it's protected by the region that's why nobody wants to be in a bad point about that but you know there's not a lot of difference if you do the business right I'm focusing on the PX right now. PX is like if I have to choose Rain one, really or the other, I will go with PX. 
the grape from the wine really shines through here. It's like dark. It's a little bit like Sultana. Then it gets darker on the plums. A little bit. A subtle touch of sulfur. There is, uh, which I like a lot, so I'm not complaining. <laughs> no. No complaints at all. Yeah, sulfur, you know, it's not for everyone. Uh, it has different understandings for people. I love yeah. sulfuric whiskey. Yeah. Uh, um, there, there was, there, there's a sulfur bone I tried lately. Which is I'm great. drinking recently a Glengoyne, actually, from K&L. That oh, is very a, sulfuric. I, I know old particular, yeah. I know that. Yeah. I, I, when will I we actually... see an old particular Paul John? Oh, no idea. Yet. We, we, we are being uh, bottled by some, you know, uh, independent bottlers, that particular whiskey, malts of Scotland. That's right. Um, I have somewhere a six-year-old Paul John from Boutique yeah, Whiskey. Yeah. Scotch Malt Whiskey Society and Gordon and McPhail, of course. And we also have our own single cask barrels, um, like bottles. That's two true. Of them will, two um, of them will be coming to the U.S. Uh, in the first four months for Southern California Whiskey Club and Drummer's Club. Drummer's Club. Club. One of them people. is unbeated, yeah. one of them is peated. So that, that will offer a good chance of seeing Collect them all. <laughs> like, if you can find them, like uh, Southern California's bottle number is 180. Uh, Drummer's bottle number is 125. So oh, that, wow. That, that's, that's a low amount. And yeah. But yeah, we will have them first. And hopefully next year we are starting a new barrel program. Mm -hmm. It's uh, Sazerac Single Barrel Select. So we will have different barrel selections for our That's classic. That's right. Paul John is not part of the Sazerac portfolio. Uh, yes, Sazerac has invested in Paul John. Uh, right. We are, still, all, we are still independently owned. Uh, but Paul John is invested by Sazerac. And uh, well, some of our uh, products are on the same line. And that, that's been helpful. Uh, we can see some interest rising there. Like It's, it's still not, you know, Pappy points. <laughs> But my opinion of Pappy is that it is not worth the money and it can go of course, you know, of course. It can go away. So with just the last few minutes here, Karai. Please. Um first of all, I want to thank you for joining me for you know the last one of the year. Um I'm really glad that I got to have you on. I know we were gonna have you on earlier and you know, some things came up and I had to push you back and you were really grateful and really, you know, humble about it, like, well, not no. <laughs> it was like, Yeah, sure, whatever, whatever makes it easy. Um, next week we're off you guys. Uh, I'm going to actually take some time off of, you know, streaming. Um, so there'll be no content until the second week in January. So we're taking the, we're taking the sep January 1st until January, I think it's the 14th. We'll be taking off. We might, we'll post some reviews here and there to the 12th. We'll post reviews and we might post some uh, pre recorded content, but there will be no live streams until January 12th. And that guest will be revealed closer to the date because I have still a few things to firm up. Um, Karai, would you talk to us just really briefly about where we can find Paul John and where we can follow you? Of course, uh, you can follow me from Korai underscore Paul John on Instagram or Whiskey Monster, Whiskey without an E on Instagram, or WhiskeyMonster.com is also my website. You can just go there. Um, Paul John, finding Paul John is pretty uh, easy. If you're in California, you can just go to your, thank you for that. Uh, you can just uh, use, you know, Canal Wines, Total Wines, um, Cypress Liquor. Uh, whiskey monster or is it whiskey monster? It's just whiskey, whiskey monster. Right? Yeah, yeah, like this is this is right. Thank you. Um, so your favorite liquor store should have it. If not, please tell them. Or if you want to know where you can find it, you can just send me a message and I will just help you with that, and it will be easier. And like not every product is everywhere, uh, but if you want the Christmas edition, PX and Oloroso, they are all at KNL Wines right now. And Christmas edition is at more places. PX and all also are a little bit limited. Nirvana should be a little bit more because of the price range, of course. Uh, at Mission Wines and I think at High Times in Southern California. You can find it over there too. 
and but if you're anywhere outside of california you can just let me know and i will help you find the best choice and if you have any questions about the products of course yeah so on screen is karai's two instagrams whiskey monster and karai paul john um so as he said you know feel free to reach out to him if you have questions about i can just screenshot this for you karai I'm happy to do this. It's easy. <laughs> um, if you have questions about where to find product, uh, I'm sure he'd be more than happy to help you figure out which expression of Paul John you would like the best, actually. Um, with that being said, what is your favorite, Karai? That, that's tough. Um, current lineup? I think my heart goes for PX, this guy over there. Uh, let me put it in this way. The core range, I am a sucker for classic. It's like one of, it's Goa in a bottle, what we call it. Like I want a cast strength Oloroso. Cast strength Oloroso, we used to have one. Uh, it was called the Oloroso single cast, but it's sold out years ago. If you can find it, you can only find it at auctions. I, I have been trying and no chance yet. Well, maybe I'll get lucky. Yeah, maybe. Uh, but yeah, like the, the older also, we had a cast strength one, which was brilliant. But these guys are also brilliant at 48%. Um, Christmas editions, uh, they're all different. I do like 2019 a lot. And 2018 is also, a, you know, auction whiskey right now. So it's it's collectible. If you want to collect 2018 uh, Christmas editions, that's a good idea. And yeah i think px is quite like what i will reach right now but you know if you ask me this question in the summer in the heat i will definitely go for a nirvana i was like okay i would say okay let me make myself a high ball with nirvana that's what i would do gotcha well karai once again uh we are gonna wrap up a little early because you know it's the holidays i want to get back to your wife who i'm sure is ready to kill me for keeping you for so long <laughs> still have um, to do the cleaning here Ooh, good luck uh, thank, you. thank you again for joining us. Thank you everyone for tuning in. Um, again, I really appreciate it. This channel wouldn't be possible without the help and the time of people like Karai and without viewers like yourselves. Um, I'm going to toss up my social media real quick if you don't already follow me. Um, you will be able to follow me on Instagram at the whiskey Psalm. I spell it the American way. Um, and then Facebook is the Beginner's Guide to Whiskey. For those of you who are newer to watching the channel. Um, like I said, we'll be off until January the 12th. So Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Happy Kwanzaa. A very belated Hag Sameach. Uh, happy Hogmanay. And until 2021. Thank you, Karai, for joining us. Thank you very much, Sam, for having me. Don't go anywhere. We'll talk to you in just one second. Salute. Salute. Don't ask me how I pushed the wrong button. So let's try that again. Salute. So I, I'm ending with this. Salute. <laughs> oh, I'll end with something fun then, too. I'll end with the Oloroso. Awesome.